What if I told you we could pull energy from like thin air? Mm. Not wind or solar, but from the seemingly empty space itself. Right. Sounds like science fiction, right? That's yeah. what we're diving into today, the quantum vacuum field, zero point energy, all that. Really interesting stuff. You said there was some fascinating research on this, by the way. Yeah, it's a, it's a topic that really, you know, it captures the imagination, but the core of it is some really, really interesting physics. So empty space, yeah. what are we actually talking about when we say that? We're talking about what physicists call the quantum vacuum field. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not empty. Okay. Not at all. It's more like, imagine a sea of energy buzzing with activity, even in the vacuum of space. Wow. This energy, it's everywhere, even at the subatomic level, like little tiny electromagnetic wave just popping in and out of existence everywhere. So not your average empty room then? No, not at all. Okay, so we're talking about harnessing this energy. Right. How much juice are we talking about here? So think of the sun. Okay. Its energy output is just immense, right? Yeah. Now, imagine a force containing the power of a billion suns packed into every cubic centimeter of space. Oh, wow. That's the kind of energy density we're dealing with when it comes to the quantum vacuum field. Even if we could tap into a tiny, tiny fraction of it, it would completely revolutionize our energy landscape. That's almost impossible to wrap my head around. Yeah. And I thought my electricity bill was something else. So where's all this energy come from? Well, there's two main contenders in the theoretical ring right now. Okay. One is quantum electrodynamics, QED. Mm. You heard of it? I have. It's rooted in this idea that even a perfect vacuum, totally devoid of matter, mm -hmm. is still subject to the laws of quantum mechanics. There's still these fluctuating energy fields. So even with nothing there, there's something happening. It's like the universe can't sit still. Precisely. Yeah. Then there's stochastic electrodynamics, or SED which takes a different approach. Okay. It suggests that these zero point fluctuations, they arise from the interaction of charged particles throughout the universe. So QED is focused on the inherent energy of the va vacuum itself. Yeah. And SED is more about the universe echoing within it. That's a great way to put it. It's two different ways of explaining the same observed phenomenon. This constant underlying energy field that's just permeating everything. And while they approach it from different angles, both agree on one crucial point. This zero point energy exists. Now, proving we can actually tap into it, that's where things get even more interesting. Okay. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence we have is something called the Casimir effect. The Casimir effect, it rings a bell, but to be honest, I could use a refresher. So imagine you have two metal plates just hanging out in a vacuum, really close together, but not touching. Okay. You'd think they just stay yeah. put. Yeah, nothing's pushing or pulling on them. Exactly. But here's where it gets weird. In the 1940s, this physicist, Hendrik Casimir, he predicted that these plates would actually be attracted to each other. Because this invisible sea of energy we're talking about, this zero-point energy... So this zero-point energy, it can actually move objects. It's not so much about strength. It's more like pressure. See, the quantum vacuum field... It's full of these electromagnetic waves at all frequencies. Right. But between two plates, only certain wavelengths can exist. Okay. Kind of like musical notes, you know, mm -hmm. how they resonate in a chamber. Because the plates are so close together. Exactly. Only certain waves can fit. And since there are fewer wavelengths of energy between the plates than outside them, it creates this pressure difference ah. that pushes the plates together. Wow. And that is the Casimir effect. It was experimentally confirmed decades later. And it's one of the strongest pieces of evidence we have for the existence of this zero-point energy. That's seriously cool. Yeah. But how do we go from, you know, these plates getting cozy in a vacuum to, like, powering my electric car? That's the million-dollar question. Yeah. Right? And it's what researchers have been grappling with for years. Right. You see, the Casimir effect itself, it's pretty subtle. And while it demonstrates that zero-point energy can do work, like turning it into a practical energy source, that's the real challenge. Okay. One of those intriguing concepts, uh, it was proposed by physicist Robert Forward in the 1980s. He called it the vacuum fluctuation battery. A battery powered by empty space. Mm -hmm. Come on, and you're messing with me. I wish. Yeah. No, Forward's idea was to take those Casimir plates. And instead of just letting them be attracted to each other, he wanted to use that attraction to do something useful. Okay. Harness that inward pressure. So how do you do that? So imagine you charge those plates, but you charge them with the same polarity. Okay. 
So now they repel each other, right? Right. So now you've got this Casimir force trying to pull them together. Right. And this electrostatic force trying to push them apart. Okay. Ford's idea was to fine-tune these forces very carefully. Okay. So that the plates would move very slowly towards each other, converting some of that vacuum energy into electrical energy. So it's like a slow dance between these two forces. Yeah, like a very controlled slow dance. And as they move, they generate electricity. Precisely. And to recharge the battery, you just reverse the process. Right. You push the plates apart again. Okay. But as with all things in physics, it's never that simple. Right. There are always losses, friction, heat dissipation. Right. In the end, you would need to put in more energy to recharge the battery mm -hmm. than you would get out of it. So no free lunch? Unfortunately not. Even with zero point energy. Not yet, anyway. But even if forward's battery isn't, you know, some kind of perpetual motion machine. Right. It still proves that you can extract usable energy from the quantum vacuum field. Yeah. That's huge. So what other kind of groundbreaking concepts are scientists exploring in this field? What about those micro cavities you mentioned? Oh, yes. Tell me about that. The micro cavities. This idea takes a different approach. Okay. Instead of plates... Imagine building incredibly small cavities on the scale of nanometers. <laughs> Manometers, okay. To put that into perspective, a sheet of paper, it's about 100,000 nanometers thick. We're talking like really small. Yeah. Smaller than a virus. Smaller than a virus, yeah. So how do these teeny cavities play into all of this? Okay, so the idea is you create cavities so small that they can actually interact with individual atoms. Okay. Remember we were talking about the Casimir plates? Right. And how they affect the wavelengths of energy yeah. in the it, vacuum field? Yeah. Well, these micro cavities, they do something similar. Okay. But on a much, much smaller scale. Okay. They manipulate the energy levels within the atoms themselves. Hold on. Yeah. We're going subatomic here, sure. right? Yeah. So remind me how atoms and energy levels, how does that all work again? Yeah. So atoms, they're made up of even tinier particles. Right. Electrons, they're called. Right. And they orbit the atom's nucleus, right? Right. And these electrons, they can exist at different energy levels. Okay. It's kind of like rungs on a ladder. Okay. And when an electron jumps down to a lower rung, a lower energy level, yeah, it releases energy as like light or heat. Okay. So we've got these tiny ladders inside atoms. Yeah. And they're releasing energy by jumping down these rungs. Exactly. What do the cavities have to do with it? Okay. So imagine those micro cavities as being like tiny walls. <laughs> that can selectively block certain energy levels within the atom. Okay. By doing so, you're essentially forcing those electrons to jump down to even lower rungs than they normally would, releasing even more energy in the process. It's like rigging the ladder so they have to slide down faster. Exactly. And generate more energy as they go. You got it. And the potential payoff is huge. Oh, okay. Some scientists think that under the right conditions, these micro cavities, they could allow us to extract kilowatts of power kilowatts yeah enough to power your house potentially yeah. from these atomic scale interactions so instead of just using the energy you know between the plates we're manipulating the energy inside the atoms themselves precisely that's incredible it's very very cutting edge stuff yeah i like, bet building something that small and being able to manipulate things oh well, yeah at that level it's right on the cutting edge of nanotechnology for sure wow so we've gone from invisible energy fields to plates that move on their own to like literally manipulating the building blocks of matter that's what we're talking about yeah it's almost overwhelming but in a good way it really is. It's mind blowing some of this stuff. It is. It is. So as we kind of wrap up here. Yeah. Is there like one key takeaway you hope, you know, our listener walks away with? I think, you know, the quantum vacuum field, the mm. sea of energy that's all around us. It's just it really shows how much we don't know about the universe. Yeah. And while we're still figuring out how to, you know, practically tap into that energy. Right. I think the very pursuit of this knowledge, it's really pushing the boundaries of physics yeah. and our understanding of reality itself. It's like opening a door to a whole new realm of possibilities. Exactly. It's yeah. incredible. It's an exciting time to be thinking about these things. You know? It is. It is. Yeah. Even if even if we never, you know, get a practical device out of it. Yeah. Just understanding these things at a deeper <laughs> level. Right. It's so profound. That really is. It really is. So to our listener out there, Next time you're thinking about empty space, it's not so empty after all. 
And who knows, maybe one day we'll be powering our world with the very essence of the universe itself. Thanks for diving deep with us today. My